Hi, I'm Eric Westrich, and you're watching Startup Show San Diego, a startup TV show about startup companies. Together, we celebrate startup heroes and leaders and grow our startup ecosystem to create even more. Over the next half hour, we'll connect you to the fun and culture of the startup community, to inspiring stories and to tools and resources that startups need to succeed. And if you're a fan of women and startups, you won't want to miss this Women Tech episode. Stay tuned. Welcome to Startup Show San Diego. Today, my co-host, Elizabeth Perez, and I will be talking about women and women in startups. We'll be talking about our tech scene with our guest, Felina Hansen, exploring women in startups with our expert panel and hearing the inspiring story of F-Show founder, Lolita Taub. We'll also be going on-site to Harahub to interview women in startups. First, we'd like to introduce our guest, Harahub founder, Felina Hansen. Felina is turning her idea for a spa-inspired workplace into an international brand. And she is bringing Workspace Accelerator and funding under the same umbrella with Hair Labs and Hair Angels. She is also author of the book Flight Club, and you can watch Felina's fantastic interview on our webpage. Felina, welcome. Thank you, Elizabeth. Felina, uh, as you know, Startup Show San Diego is a startup. Yes. And we worked on our first month, it was almost two months, mm -hmm. on content. So in June, we learned how to broadcast content, started learning that. In July, we kind of learned how to edit and video cast content. And now we're starting to learn how to podcast content. Okay. But we had a, a startup expert, Austin Newdecker, say the first thing he would do is make lots of mistakes and learn quickly. Great advice. We've been making mistakes. <laughs> Hopefully, we've been learning quickly. So um, if you were startup show San Diego, what would you be doing right now? Well, you guys are doing a great job. I mean, really, it's just telling the stories of folks in San Diego who are innovating, they're doing things differently, they're bringing new technologies right here to San Diego. So we're on the right track. You are on the right track, yes, absolutely. <laughs> what is your book Flight Club about and why did you write it? Awesome, well, thanks for asking. So Flight Club is a play off the movie title Fight Club, and it's about taking flight in entrepreneurship. So it's targeted towards women who are thinking about, as we call it, leaning out as opposed to leaning in and want both the inspiration, but also the action on how to launch a business. Does that mean rule number one is we don't talk about Flight Club? <laughs> yes. I have had that referenced a few times. It really is part my story and then stories of other women who have launched their own business. And the last part of the book, which I'm particularly proud of, is a 17 foundational steps to launch a business called Steps to Startup. So the reader gets access to an online platform that I've built, stepstostartup.com, to take them through the very first foundational steps of launching their business. Well, you, of course, are a fantastic example of any startup entrepreneur and, uh, of, co of course, women with what you've done to help other women. But um, we hear the term women tech be thrown around. Is there women tech? And if so, what is it? Uh, yeah, there, <laughs> there are women in tech and it is a thing. Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of talk highlighting the differences between men and women in business. Some, some true, some not, so to speak. As far as Hera Hub goes, we focus on supporting both women in technology, but also women in a variety of industries as well. It's really an entire ecosystem of female entrepreneurs and a few awesome men who have joined us who are building and growing and supporting each other. We have three locations in San Diego, 350 members here, right here in San Diego. And now we're expanding nationally and even internationally through a licensing model. So we're open in Washington, D.C., and I have a few other deals in the works right now. Wow. And Sarah did a great job of giving us a tour, which you can see on the uh, yeah. Yeah. web page also. Uh, so what are, what are the biggest changes in San Diego uh, in the startup scene for women um, over the last couple of years that you've seen? 
I think it's really support. I mean, there has just been such an incredible amount of support for all entrepreneurs in San Diego and such a focus on events like Startup Week, which have just done phenomenal things for the ecosystem in San Diego. The universities have played a big role in that, both the University of San Diego and UCSD. There's just a lot more momentum and focus on the entrepreneurial culture here in San Diego, and that's what gets me excited. And real quickly, what are you most excited about right now. Right now, I'm excited about the Hera Venture Summit that's coming up at University of San Diego September 17th. An amazing day helping female founders and inspiring female funders. Oh, that's great. Well, Felina, thank you so much for your time and thank you for so much for everything that you do. My pleasure. Okay. Thank you, Felina. Stay tuned and Elizabeth will be right back with our expert panel. Do you have a small space, maybe in your home or in an office environment, that you'd love to turn into a freestanding broadcast studio? I'm talking about in a really small space if you need to. Something that would include a chroma key backdrop, custom lights, a media grid that could be moved anywhere very, very quickly, and monitors, cameras, all the lighting you need all in one place that would be totally clutter-free and not leave a trace behind. I'm talking about no holes. Well, this is a big idea. It's called iStudio, and what the iStudio team does is meets with you, looks at your space, and helps you configure a completely customizable, personal, portable broadcast studio and studio environment that can be used for practically any purpose. You could create products inside it. You could broadcast a message. You could bring in guests, but you can also continue to use this environment as an office as well. So you can mount any number of monitors in front of you. Maybe it could have statistics on it. It could have keynote presentations or PowerPoint if you're doing corporate presentations. But more importantly, you could control and configure everything yourself if you want to or even bring in an assistant. What's really, really nice about iStudio is it's completely customizable and like I said, clutter-free as well. So all you need to do to take advantage of this and find out more is meet with your iStudio team. They'll ask you a little bit about your space, what you want to do with the system and what your outcome and goals are and they'll find the perfect equipment and the setup, the lights, the chroma key, the wall environment, the screens, everything you need all in one place. So check out iStudio right now. Welcome to our Women Tech Panel. We are excited to have experts that cover starting a business to running and funding businesses. These women know firsthand what women in startups are adding to the San Diego startup ecosystem. Brianna Weisinger is an expert on building relationships, managing projects, and funding. Sonia Davis is an expert on starting and marketing businesses. And Regina Vernal is an expert on entrepreneurship, social impact, and funding. Panel, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. What is exceptional about you and your organizations? Well, um, for the University of San Diego, we are a change maker campus. So we really believe in being inclusive and really giving the power to all our students to start their own business. I think we, we have a strong focus towards supporting female entrepreneurs. So for me, I started a company called Nectar. And what's really different about it is that we help connect people through things that they're really passionate about and causes that drive them. And then we help them meet at group activities in the community like volunteering and charity work. So we work with nonprofits and we're really getting them to give back and do good in the community together. So, uh, UC San Diego is unique because it's one of the largest research institutions in the region. So when we're talking about women in tech, um, we have a wealth of resources at the university. We are a billion dollar campus when it comes to research. We're top two out of the UC system in terms of commercialization of our technologies that are coming out of our labs. Where are the best places in San Diego for women to get the resources they need to start a business? 
Well, in my opinion, one of the great resources that we have in San Diego is the Hera Hub and Hera Labs and Hera Accelerator um, conglomerate, I guess I would call it. They are fantastic for women, women in technology, women in all sorts of different industries. You can also have, re you also have resources on the campus which are female focused, but if you're not at a university, that's, that's the place to go. And I would say that co-working spaces are actually a really great way for people to connect. It's always three degrees of separation in San Diego. You can always meet really great people, and they're happy to connect you and work with you. Um, I'm also working on an initiative in San Diego called Startup Collaborative, which highlights women in the community and helps provide new entrepreneurs and later stage entrepreneurs with the resources they need to really be successful. Um, for women starting business, and I think it's, there's so many events uh, and so much support from the community in San Diego, that uh, if you really are looking to make strong connections and build your network, there's many opportunities, whether it's through universities, whether it's through Hera, or if it's even reaching out to a female that you admire and making the connection through there. Very good advice, Lynn. Um, what is important for women to know when running a business and where do women find mentors? I think the first thing to think about is do not be afraid to get your ideas out there. Often we find ourselves being very secretive or doubting that our idea is good enough. I think get your idea out there, start building your network, um, collaborate with other women that have started their businesses and start getting their advice fast. I think it's really important to really trust your gut and ride your vision forward because there's always going to be people that are going to tell you their opinion and there's always going to be naysayers, but it's really important to trust what you feel is best and really take that vision forward. I think a lot of women sometimes shy away from that or they want to you know, work with different people that come and give their opinion, but it's just really important to stick to it and take a stand and be strong. So, and I'll, I'll talk to the mentor piece. Um, I think it's important for women to have mentors, but not just female mentors. I think you have to, have, to have to have a balanced set of mentors. You have to have men and women from different industries and different perspectives because this is how you get opinions and ideas to grow and, and improve. But um, it's not easy to get a mentor. It's not something that you can just go and you know, introduce yourself and bam, you're a mentor. You have to have a certain uh, relationship and a certain sort of... Um, interaction between the two people that really there's is synergistic and it's hard to do but it's worth the effort you can go into your network you can go into other people's network if you do a little online stalking through LinkedIn or something like that um, good places to go are also co-working spaces and accelerators and other other groups of people that are like-minded for startups that's really good advice. Mm -hmm. I also would like to say, you know, masterminds is something that's really important. It kind of came on later stage for me. I wish I had a mastermind group from day one, but since being in a mastermind the last couple of, the last month, it's been a game changer for me. It's like a whole group of people that really support you and you can walk through every step, your goals, and they give you really concrete advice and it's accountability. I mean, I think one of the most important things with starting a business is having to be accountable because you know a lot of times you're kind of you're the you might have a team of people but really as the founder you you have to drive it forward so being accountable to people is super important and how did you find your um Actually, well, through my co-working space I work out a third space and um, full on is heading up the uh, the mastermind so co-working spaces are the most amazing resource that's like your home away from home so. ladies what should be the first thing that women think about when funding a business and what resources are available? I think the first thing to think about when you're starting your business is how fast you can start going to your potential customers and start testing. You might think you have the most brilliant idea, but unless you can go out there and prove it, you're uh, probably not going to be very successful. I completely agree with you. The number one thing is to talk to your market because even though you think you have this amazing idea, your market will really tell you. And of course, actions speak louder than words as well. So them testing it and seeing how they engage with their product. But also, you know, initially for funding your product, there's the three Fs, the friends, family, and fools, which is great initially. Also learning how to bootstrap. And then again, networking and finding those three degrees of separations for people to make intros to maybe angels or other people that align with your vision. In terms of the funding, it's also important to really understand what kind of industry you're entering and what your business is going to be long term. So if you're going for a large scale business, maybe you'll be considering venture capital down the road. If you're going for um, 
a smaller scale business, that might not be something that a VC would be interested in. One thing for women to remember when they are going into a large scale business is women um, founded businesses get about 4% of venture capital in the United States. So the rate is very low, but that doesn't mean that the funding isn't out there and isn't available. You have to be creative. You have to work your network very hard. You also have to look at alternative sources of funding maybe early on so you can get some of the foundation built so you can get the attraction and the momentum that you're looking for. Very good advice. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your time and thank you for everything that you do, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. After our segment on women in startups uh, filmed at Herahub, Eric will be back with the F Show founder, Lolita Taub. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Eric Westers, and I'm excited to be here at San Diego Startup Week. I'm also excited to have Raj Songvi of BitCot with us. Um, I asked Raj to come by because when he helped us with the Startup Show San Diego website, uh, he had kind of a unique perspective and I hadn't really even had a chance, we haven't really had a chance to talk hardly at all and I wanted to have a more in-depth conversation. So maybe you could tell us uh, where you got that startup bug. Uh, thank you for having me here, Eric. This is a great opportunity for San Diego Startup Week and my background is working on enterprise software, worked with a lot of Fortune 100 companies and the biggest pain point was the red tape and slowness in the process. I started my company to help startups and software development to be much faster, much efficient, and build mobile apps, web apps, technology to be the driving force that can still be done at a lower cost and be scalable. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Perez with Startup Show San Diego, and we're here at Hair Hub interviewing women in startups. Who are you and what do you do that's amazing? My name is Meredith Sudborough. My grocery store, Green Groceries to Go, delivers healthy food to people across the nation. I am Kim Walpole. I am the co-founder and CEO of Catalysty Clinical. Uh, we are an online platform that essentially navigates researchers through the process of managing clinical trials. My name is Mariana and I always pursue my dreams. My name is Victoria Robertson. I am an entrepreneur and a professional musician. I was a trained opera singer for over 15 years and now I own a startup company called World Travel VR where I take my experience in video production virtual reality and travel, and I combine them all into uh, this new hip industry. Hi, um, I'm Renee Zell. I'm the co-founder of Donation Match, and I love the win-win partnerships that we make between event organizers and charitable companies. I'm Lily, an expert from Russia, and I work for hardware and software development company. My name is Jessica West, and what I do that is amazing is I keep moving forward to reach my goals. My name is Adalia Carrillo and I am the CEO of Direct Cannabis Network. I'm creating a voice for startups in an industry that is, still has a lot of stigma. What is the best thing about being in a startup? Uh, we walk into a room and we can kind of command attention. The fact that I walk in and I'm a little bit different with my gender uh, could have people take notice of me and, and find out what it is that I have to say. I love the flexibility that I have in deciding when I work, uh, where I work, the relationships I'm making, and the supportive community. The thing is to bring all my communication skills, all that I can do to make all the biggest projects happen. I think the best thing for me in being a startup um, is that it gives me the ability to know myself better and a big part of that is empowering women and so it, knowing that I can help other women um, is probably the best part for me. We are just as strong and just as talented um, as anyone in, in the technology industry. <laughs> what is the biggest challenge about being in a startup? It's the balancing of my home life and my business life. I will walk into a room with my, uh, my tech folks and folks will look at them and assume that they're the CEO. They'll ask them about our, uh, our stack and things like that and they won't even consider that I might actually know the answers to some of these things. 
The biggest challenge I have is being seen as a woman as opposed to any other startup founder. The biggest challenge uh, is to make men understand there's something behind this appearance. I think the biggest challenge for me as a woman in startup is finding a balance between my business and my family. I'm also a single mom, so finding the time to juggle my two girls and my business is my biggest challenge by far. I'm a little bit younger than a lot of the people that are CTOs or CEOs in these companies. Um, so it is just kind of showing who I am and that I am, I can handle, I can handle running the company. <laughs> Where have you found your mentors? I found a great community in San Diego called Mompreneurs and they've been my biggest inspiration. I have had such amazing mentors. Um, right now, we are incubating at Evo Nexus. I've gone through Founder Institute. So we have connected with some of the best people here in San Diego. My first mentor would be my father. Every boss I've ever had, every professor that I've had, they have leave me with a lot of lessons that I apply on a daily basis to running this business. Anybody who's been successful in a startup is my mentor. <laughs> I've found so many mentors through the startup accelerators that I've been a part of and I really enjoy the fact that they like giving back to us just as much as we love learning from them. I've been very fortunate in that the uh, subcontractors I work with are mostly women and they some of them have walked my path as a designer and they have been great guides along my path. Past jobs, um, whether it's been people that I admire, um, it's really just me finding them wherever it is in my in my life at that time um, and approaching them and asking them to really be, if they'd be interested in being my mentor. Hi, my name is Carrie Basham. I'm the owner of iPlay. And I'm so excited about this because we have this awesome new laptop case. We also do tablet, uh, tablet cases, sleeves. And we have this removable Velcro piece, which you can customize and you can put anything you want on your bag and you can express yourself to the world any way you want and i think it's really exciting oh and the other thing is it doubles as a mouse pad for all you old school people that still use a mouse like i do and uh, i'm really excited to bring it to the world If you're a fan of women and startups, then you are in the right place. The F Show was the first of its kind women empowerment online show, highlighting nearly 100 exceptional female millennial CEOs. The F Show provided video inspiration to young women in over 300 cities, 60 countries, and six continents, and has been featured on Inc. Magazine and Huffington Post. F Show founder Lolita Taub has built a career in technology industry with companies including both IBM and Cisco, and she's a founding member of Glassbreakers, a Silicon Valley diversity and inclusion software startup, and she's a TEDx speaker. Lolita, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. So, first question. Sure. Are you ready to play four amazing things? I think so. Okay, what are four <laughs> amazing things, one of which is not true, and we'll figure out one what One of it which is. is not true. So first one, I was a Greco-Roman wrestler in high school on a boys team. Wow. Number two, I've been in the tech industry for almost 10 years. Uh, number three, I am a tech geek and I am really into AI and cognitive computing right now. And number four, I went to the top of Kilimanjaro. Wow. As a Greek, Gro Roman Greco wrestler or not? Okay, no, we'll I guess out. you'll have to find out. So um, you were successful in the corporate world. What prompted you to leave? You know, it's, it's a question I get asked often, and it really comes back to the first day that I started in my corporate career at IBM at the Pentagon. I was a consultant, and I'd walk down the hallways, and you know, I've just come out of college, I, I know very little of, of the real work world, and I start noticing that there are really mostly only white middle-aged men with decor and the boss men of the whole organization. And I see maybe a sprinkle of one or two women that are, that are leading in the, in the organization. And uh, at one point I sit down with one of them and I do lunch and I say, hey, is it just me or are there really no women leaders here? And she says, Lolita, it's a problem. We have the good old, good old boys club you know, syndrome. 
and we're trying to work through it, but we're still there. At that point, I was kind of upset about it, mm -hmm. uh, but I couldn't really do much about it. I had just graduated from, from college, had some loans to do, so I really just needed to put my head down and get to work. Fast forward to 2014, I'm in a women mastermind. We're working towards you know, helping each other become successful women in technology. And uh, I decide to do an interview series, much like what we were doing. But I interview the women in our mastermind, put it on our Facebook group, and the women's feedback is, oh my gosh, I didn't know. Uh, this is so great, this is inspirational. I, I, I feel empowered to be an even greater role model. And that puts, leaves a seed in my brain. Next thing that happens at the time, I'm at, at Cisco and I'm a sales executive managing the business for Southern California Native American tribes. I, it's the first time I've been managing this business or this industry niche. And so I take a class at, uh, at a local college and my professor turns out to be a tribal chief. And this tribal chief is really, to get down to, your, to the answer, who prompts me to leave corporate. How did he do that? How did he do that? So this class is really meant to learn about the gaming, the tribal nation business, and, uh, but what he did in the class was really instill the notion that each one of us is a leader. And I had never thought of myself as a leader until that point, a leader that can change a community. And uh, he, I'll always remember his words, and these, this was definitely the cross section. He said, Lolita, we are, we have an honor, an obligation, and a responsibility to serve and strengthen our community. And that, in a nutshell, was the first step into saying, I'm going to step out of the corporate world and go do something for people that I really care about, which turned out to be female millennial uh, entrepreneurs, but in general, women in tech and just supporting women become better leaders. And so bigger so leaders you just the see the world is and say it should be different. You get people who are trying to make a change and live their change. You get inspired by that. And so you create F Show. So what is F Show? The F Show is a show that inspires, support, and guide uh, either aspiring or already entrepreneur women. And so what I did for this, I traveled to for four months to 18 countries and I interviewed nearly 100 women from different backgrounds, asking them, asking them to share their story and asking them to share their tips. So and that's essentially what it is. And so what was the thing that anyone said to you, either watching or was on your show, that made you most proud or most sure that you've done the right thing? Well, there, there have been many things, but one of the very, simple, the very simple answer to your question is having women say, thank you for putting it together because now I can start seeing myself as someone who can start a business. And real quickly, what does the future look like? What are you most excited about right now? What am I most excited? Well, I'm very excited to see this wonderful community of entrepreneurs and also women in, in corporate reach their goals and become better leaders. Because right now we have only 11% of women in corporate Fortune 500 uh, and only 4% in the startup world in tech as executives and leaders. And so we need to work on that. And I'm really excited to see that happen and be part of it. So Lolita, of the four amazing things, which were true? They were all true except for the last one. I did not go all the way to Kilimanjaro to the top. It takes five days. And so I just did a half day and it was beautiful, amazing, and that was good enough. <laughs> well, I, I want to see those Greco-Roman pictures as soon on the internet as soon as possible. Absolutely. Uh, but other than that, thank you so much for everything Thanks you do for and for being me. here. And thank you for connecting to our startup community and helping us grow our startup ecosystem. Also, thank you to our sponsors, Instant Studio, Bitcot, and iPlay. And don't forget to connect with us at StartupShowSD.com and at StartupShowSD on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And watch our videos at StartupShowSD.com slash videos. See you next time.